right, here we go. Tight flushing. So I, uh, I'll try and kind of uh, give a little bit of a tutorial on kind of how I go about doing it. I usually find that uh, I can tell a lot by a coyote because sometimes because so first of all like I'll, a lot of times I'll take and I'll skin coyotes and throw them in bags if I don't have time to take and skin them on a given day I'll throw them in bags so then when I take them out of a bag the first cut that I take and put on a coyote is the nose cartilage and a lot of times I can tell by the toughness and the size of the nose cartilage kind of how that's going to take and go this particular coyote here not doesn't appear to be a very fatty coyote at all so sometimes that means that you're going to have that overall membrane tied a little bit tighter to the high to the skin uh, but be that as it may it just kind of helps give you an indication as to uh, what's coming so I'll uh, I'll start by saying I'm a fan of uh, of this particular two-handed flesher. This is my beaver side. This is my coyote side. Coyote and wolf and fox. I don't really like this one for fox, but I just don't do enough with fox. Uh, fox is just such a delicate animal. Um, Got to take and invest in one. But I take and uh, I use. Uh, my two-handed flasher for pretty well everything on the head. Um, I just kind of start by feeling it out, kind of giving it an overall, taking just a little bit of the juice and scraps off, kind of see what I've got. I did manage to get a pretty good nick right by the ear here. I don't really like that. I might even take a sew that up but yeah I like to uh, take and pretty well use my my two-handed flesher for the whole works on the head Just taking, get some of those eyebrows started there. Just kind of work those eyes a little bit. Eyes are kind of kind of done there. Top there, I'll get with the knife. Then I'll work over to the side a little bit. Now here, because I managed to get a pretty healthy little nick in there bit of an uncharacteristic spot to take and have a, a little while there but at any rate it is what it is just like to work that spot there right beside the ears I don't have to flush that too much this one's a bit cut there so once I'm that far, I'm going to take and skin these ears out a little bit. Now I've seen guys do these ears different and I'll admit that I don't think that I'm uh, 
exactly where I want to be yet with my kind of my finished product as far as how I go about skin and cartilage out of ears I know uh, some guys they advertise that they they do them a lot quicker but I have found that for me this works pretty good in that uh, I always do appreciate my finished product with uh, nicely pinned ears and the cartilage worked out Yeah, and this is where my left hand thumb comes in once I want to take and pull that out. And then I'll just take and skin this. Front out. That's kind of ready to go there. Peel these ears out. And yeah, this is again, this was always my, my left thumb. Did the work on the ears. And uh, I've managed to wreck that cartilage. It seems to be kind of coming back, but guys most of you know that once you have a program and everything starts to become kind of automatic as you do it and that's where your efficiency lies then when you have to change your routine up kind of cramps the guy's style a bit So that's that. We'll just take and flip this guy over. Quickly do a little bit of work here around the bottom part of the jaw. Just clean that up a little bit so that flushing and then uh, tidying that up once we've got it on the board. process there we go and I can see he's dry right where the snare caught him so I have to be careful oh he got a couple little nicks in him 
I try to keep my work area as uh, as close to being uh, cleaned up as I can. Oh yeah, this is this is a scary guy and right there. He had some kind of a some kind of a wound. Not exactly sure. But that is an old scar. Festering old scar. I'll just take and tidy that up just a little bit. Just brush a little bit of that out. Oh yeah, you can see. Old horsehair brush. I'd never do without this thing. It's just dull enough that it's not super aggressive. And it really, really is awesome for kites. So there's another spot I gotta work around. Well, there you go. Making her interesting. What I usually like to try to do is I like to try to go down the back and I can see here that it just doesn't want to give me too much and I like to always kind of live by the rule that any time that you're in danger of uh, scraping holes into your hide you want to scrape a little bit less and if you're fighting with it to that extent then uh, leave it on leave it on let her dry and uh, yeah I like to go down the back as uh, kind of what it does for me is it uh, just gives me a, uh, a really nice start to uh, the hard working spots. It's got another scar right there. You really just, sometimes you gotta be so careful. About uh, some of the old crazy war wounds that these things have and uh, not taking uh, gouge great big holes in them and this is a really good spot to do it but this one isn't too bad Uh, this one is a uh, not a very not a fat coyote, not a very fleshy coyote. Try to work around that there a little bit. A little strip there. is actually going to be a pretty quick bite for me here looks like and again I'm sure there's 
guys. Uh, do it different. Do it a lot faster than me. That's okay. This is what's working for me. Try not to take and get too discouraged when you've got a program that works for you. Yeah, and then now that I've got kind of the front done, sometimes I go all the way down the back, or all the way down the back and then all the way down the front. But uh, sometimes I find that it's just kind of a decision that I make on the fly. And uh, sometimes it's just easier to do it all while you're already there the first time. But when you got a really, really hard flushing coyote, that's when I'll uh, I'll do uh, back, down the back, down the belly, and then the sides. But this one here, he's flushing so good, he just doesn't have a whole lot there. That I can just kind of get it all in one pass. You always want to slow down right here at this opening. You don't want to take it catch the edge of that hide and gouge a great big great big cut takes and catches right here and just opens right opens right up wide done it done it many times and then on the back here I always take I'll bring that tail up over the top here Swing it off to the side. Just pinch it with your uh, with your gut, and then start from the middle. And you'll be surprised at even the hardest coyotes that you have when they've got that that beaver fat back back here. If you just take and work that, you know, find that edge there, open it up, and then start just rolling it and, and pushing it over. You'll be amazed at how much easier it can be for you. Um, and it, it it's almost like that's kind of the 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 memory of it wanting to take and peel off if that makes any sense because you can fight with that piece right there um, and this little bit right here too like some of that you can really fight with it if you want depending on the kite that you have but I found that once I took an started on that back it, it really took and made my life a lot easier and I don't know if uh, I guess that other coyote was a little fattier but That'll about do it for a fleshing video, I suppose. For now, I'll see what kind of comments and questions I get. Um, and I know this winter I was kind of so busy that uh, one of the best examples that I had <coughs> were uh, never utilized. For doing videos but I'm doing one now so I'll flip it over get the back over here the tail and again there's just not that much there and uh, it's some pretty important spot back here for getting onto your forming board and everything so you really kind of want to be careful that you don't make a blooper reel now this late in the game 
pretty well got him all ready to go so you don't want to try too hard now just let him let him get done there's still a lot of ways you can take and wreck this thing with your scraper pull him real hard and pull the side of his leg off open up his belly and uh, all of that is very disappointing that'll come off with the trim I'll flip this one around and just lay him down a little bit give him a quick comb here Not a very high quality kite by any means. It does seem a bit thin in the back there, but it'll still fetch average price in the market. Here we go. Flushing 101. Solo trapper. Solo trapper style. Boom.